Open up your Bibles, please, to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And what chapter in Matthew do you think I'm going to ask you to turn 24. to? Yes, Matthew 24. 24 sorry. <laughs> now, I want people to understand this, why I ask my members that. That's how tiring this subject is. Amen. But it's amazing how pervasive uh, that wrong thinking is concerning the church will go through the tribulation. Look, even my members know this subject till it made them really sick. So they know this subject intently. And surprisingly, there are so many people who believe the church will go through the tribulation. You got to realize this. The scripture is plainly clear that the church cannot and will not go through the tribulation. Amen. Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to cover their two main chapters. So this is going to be an easy way. I made separate videos on Matthew 24. You heard me debunking this over and over again. You heard me debunking 2 Thessalonians 2 over and over again. But what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just briefly show you the flaws with these passages so that people online can understand. Because it looks like they have a great misconception on these two passages. This is literally their John 3.16 passages, Matthew 24 and 2 Thessalonians 2. All right, so verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then notice what happens after the tribulation, verse 29. In verse 31, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet and they shall de gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So we see right here that it seems like a rapture that happens after the tribulation. Now look at second now keep your hand at those two places. Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 please. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now I want people online to understand this. Some people online not only my members, but some people online were kind of tired of me covering this subject, thoroughly debunking that the church will go through the tribulation. But apparently there's a lot of others online that didn't know that. So I want people online to get this memo from watching this video. This thing, people online know about this stuff, that they're kind of tired of seeing it, and people in my church even know this stuff, that they're kind of tired of seeing it. So I want people to pay attention this time, please, in this particular video. If you want a more thorough debunking, please look at my other videos on that one, covering Matthew 24 and 2 Thessalonians 2. Now, I'm at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, why does this seem like a post-tribulation rapture? Because it says right here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and notice a rapture here, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, <laughs> excuse me, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the what? Day of Christ is at hand. So the post trip people or the people who deny a rapture or post millennial, etc., these people, they claim that to say that the day of Christ, which is what they think the rapture, to say the rapture is at hand, to say it can happen at any moment, is a lie. So pre-tribulation rapture, a rapture before the tribulation is a lie, that it can happen any moment. Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, referring to the rapture they're thinking, except there come a falling away first. So a falling away has to happen first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The Antichrist has to be revealed first. And notice this is like the middle of the tribulation almost, where he sits at the temple. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing that he himself is God. Okay, so in 2 Thessalonians 2, it shows several problems. One day of Christ at hand at any moment is a lie. Second problem here is that day of Christ cannot happen until what first? Two things. 
It can only happen until two things happen first, then day of Christ, which is falling away, which we've already seen, so that's not a problem. But the second part is a problem, Antichrist revealed. Antichrist revealed. And I'm going to put revealed in all caps because it's going to be important when you see later on. Now, how this is easily debunked is that when you go to Daniel chapter 9 now. Now, go to Daniel 9. And then we're going to start off at verse, Daniel chapter 9. Now, verse 27, verse 27 is the only passage in your entire Bible about seven-year tribulation. Daniel 9.27 is your only verse, and I mean only verse, about seven-year tribulation. Notice it says, he shall confirm the covenant for one week. That's where we get the idea of seven years of tribulation. One day represents one year. That's where we get the idea from. The only verse in your entire Bible for that. Now, notice right here, that in this seven-year tribulation in Daniel 9.27, this one week is referred to as 70th week, we call it. Now, why do we call it the 70th week? Because there are 69 other weeks that the Lord gave. 69 already passed. The 70th is going to be in the future. Where, where did the 69 weeks pass? The first coming of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ came down on this earth and died on the cross, the first coming of Christ fulfilled 69 weeks. So let's go backwards and you'll see that. Verse 27, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So this verse, the abomination of desolation, at this one week, is, if you look at Matthew 24, right? Matthew 24. Go back to Matthew 24. <coughs> Notice right here in Matthew chapter 24, so I hope your hands are in Matthew 24 and 2 Thessalonians 2. We're always going to be there. Matthew 24, 29 through 31. We read that, right? This is rapture after the tribulation. But look behind it, before it happens. Look behind it. Notice it says right here that at verse 15, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Right? That's right here, Daniel 9, 27. Which is Matthew 24, 15. So there's no doubt this week is referring to the tribulation week. Now, notice right here that this is the last week, and there were 69 before that, because let's go backwards. Daniel chapter 9 again, and we will look at Daniel chapter 9 and verse 25. Do you see that there? Know therefore I understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore Messiah the Prince shall be, notice, from building Jerusalem to Messiah, Jesus Christ when he comes down, shall be seven and three score and two weeks. What does that equal? That's 69 right there. 69. So in Daniel 9 and verse 25, we've seen that. Okay, so there's no doubt 69 already passed, first coming of Christ. This last week is going to be the Antichrist tribulation. But what is this referring to? Go back to 24. 70 weeks. Correct? Right. That's the total. 69, we're waiting for that 70th. 70 weeks are determined, see, appointed, is made for, reserved for, who? Upon thy people, Daniel's own people, Jews, and upon thy holy city, Daniel's holy city that time. See, that's not, there was no church that time, nor Rome. This was, what? Jerusalem. Jew, to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteous, righteousness. Notice right here, it takes them 70 weeks long to clean up their whole sin. Does any Christian clean up their sin for 70 weeks long? No, so these 70 weeks 
See that? These 70 weeks are not for Christians, that means. It doesn't take us that long. This is for a nation of Israel. That's why the nation of Israel has went through tremendous hard times and the Lord did not restore that nation yet. Why? It wasn't time yet. We did not reach the 70th yet where they fulfill uh, their transgression of what they let the Lord down all that time as a nation. It's a national salvation. So see, the tribulation is for the nation of Israel. Thus, this rapture after the tribulation is for Jews. It's for Jews. It's not for Christians. Look at Matthew 24 again, right? Even Matthew 24 showed you the context. It all matches together. Look at Matthew 24 and look at verse, six, uh, verse 15. Uh, see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, right? Stand in where? The holy place. That's the same thing with Daniel 9, uh, 24, I think. I forgot that verse. But it says, upon thy holy city, right? See, Jews. Verse 16, then let them which be in where? Judea, Jews. Uh, look at verse 20. Notice Sabbath day is mentioned. See, Jews. Again, these are for Jews, not Christians. So the tr this is utmost proof. Matthew 24 actually is proves dispensationally is for Jews, not Christians. It's proof against post-trib rapture, not for. Second Thessalonians 2 is also proof against post-trib rapture, not for. Why? Because look back at Second Thessalonians 2. The day of Christ, verse 2, we admit at verse 1, look at verse 1, the day of Christ, is that, according to verse 1, only the gathering together, a rapture? No. What does it say? And what? The coming of Christ, right? So the day of Christ is not just rapture. It's also referring to the coming of Christ. What is that coming of Christ? That coming of Christ is not during the timeline of the tribulation. It's actually Armageddon, way after the end of the tribulation. See that? So it's referring to Armageddon, Revelation 19. And Matthew chapter 24 as well. Look at Matthew 24 again. Matthew 24. See, Matthew 24 should definitely prove to you this is not for the church. It's referring to something that is definitely not post-trib rapture for church. It's for somebody else and it's for different things. Matthew 24, verse 27, 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. What is this coming of the Son of Man? For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Notice this coming of the Son of Man is where eagles are gathered together. Is that a mid-trib rapture at all? No. Look at... Revelation 19, we're not going to read it, but look at the last verses of Revelation 19. This is long after the tribulation. We're well past the tribulation. This is Revelation 19. We're not at chapters 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 through 18. This is 19. Look at the last verses of Revelation 19. Do you see the Son of Man coming out of heaven? Do you see the birds gathered together to eat the carcasses? See that? So Revelation 19 is the same thing as Matthew 24. This is what? After. This is long after, way at the end. Some people try to resolve it that this is going to be a mid-trib rapture, but no, this is well utmost proof that you can't do that. You can't even do mid-trib right here, and you have to do it long afterwards. This is Armageddon. So you see right here, this verse 1 is referring to Armageddon right here, Armageddon which is Revelation 19 and Matthew 25. So what is the day of Christ then? The day of Christ is very simple. It's two different events here. It's the rapture and Armageddon right here. Now, you see right here that in this timeline of the tribulation, no one wrote, no one drew the edges over here, so I can't tell what's the end. Okay, so... I'll just go over here. 
So you know what the day of Christ simply is? It's very simple. The day of Christ is going to cover both the rapture and Armageddon. Now some people are, are thinking, well, no, it's referring to the rapture, that we have to go through the tribulation. No, Paul is actually telling them this. He's telling the opposite. You're not going to go through this tribulation timeline, and you're going to escape this event. That's what he's saying right here when he says the day of Christ. You might say, how do you know that, Pastor? Because look at the context. Look back at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Chapter 2. So verse 1 through 4, right? He mentioned the day of Christ. And won't happen until the Antichrist is revealed, right? Now look back at verse 6. Verse 6. And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Notice here at verse 7 through 9, Paul was talking about what? The coming of Christ. See that? So at chapter 2 and verse 1, the context was about the coming of Christ. Armageddon right here. The coming of Christ. Armageddon right here. That's what he was focusing on. Notice that we read that verse, Jesus coming down, avenging his enemies. That perfectly matched with Revelation 19, Matthew 24. But look at that verse. He says in verse 7, to you who are troubled, rest with us. Paul's telling them, don't be afraid, don't be troubled. Relax. Because they're afraid of what? They're afraid of this coming of Christ. Look at verse 2. That ye be not soon shaken, uh, chapter 2, verse 2 that ye be not so soon shaken in mind or be troubled about the day of Christ, right? Are they troubled and afraid about the rapture? Or would they be troubled and afraid about Jesus Christ coming and wiping out people? See that? That's the point right here. Beca because look at 1st, uh, we're not going to read it, but look at 1st Thessalonians 5.18. That doesn't make sense. They're troubled about something. What are they troubled about? About this or about this? It's this one right here, not this one. If you insist day of Christ is going to be that the day of Christ is only referring to a rapture, that doesn't make sense. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, uh, if you read chapter 4, excuse me, 4.18, 4.18. If you look at chapter 4 and verse 18, it says, comfort one another with these words. Comfort about what? Look at verse 16 and 17. The rapture. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 4, they said the rapture is a comfort. They're not going to be troubled about the rapture. They're going to be comforted about the rapture. See that? But why did Paul say the day of Christ are troubled? Because he's referring to this event right here. If you're not afraid of Jesus Christ coming down and blaring off all the enemies, burning them up, and the eagles gathered together to pick up the carcass, who wouldn't be afraid, right? That makes more sense right here. Not only that, it says, the, uh, verse 2, that the day of Christ is at hand, right? So what would he be referring to right here? He would be referring to this one right here. That's what he's focusing on. How do you know? Because context showed it. As uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 through 9, we saw that. Not only that, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 8 also showed that. Even and then shall that wicked be revealed, right? Paul says until that Antichrist is revealed, right? What happens when he's revealed? Then day of Christ occurs, right? What is that? It's this one, not this. Because keep reading. And when that wicked shall be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the what? Brightness of his coming. See that? that? That makes sense. See, that's what they're afraid about. It's that simple. So yeah, this has to happen first, but it's referring to this one. It's not referring to this. It can't work. Why? Because we're not troubled about this. We're in comfort. By the way, here's another thing. Is that look at uh, verse 8 
uh, no, not verse 8, but starting at verses 3, notice, uh, don't let any man deceive you by any means. That day shall not come except their calling, uh, falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Right? The Antichrist is coming. Now look at this. Is that in verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. The Antichrist revealed, right? But look at this. Verse 8 through 12 is all about the tribulation, right? But in 8 through 12, about the tribulation, do you see you at all? No, it's they, right? Why? Because you're not going to be there. It's other people left behind that are going to be there. What happens to you? In verse 8 through 12, it's they, they, they. And then verse 13, but we. See, there are you. But we, what? What happens to you? In verse 14, whereunto he called you. See, God called you to something else, not to this tribulation event. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the what? Obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul's saying you're going to be raptured out of this. You're called someplace else. Look at Colossians. Look at Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 4. Colossians 3 verse 4. Why aren't you going to be there? Because in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and we saw verses 13 through 14, you're someplace else. You're raptured. You're raptured. You're not going to be here and then be afraid of this. You're going to get raptured. You're going to escape all of this. Look at Colossians chapter 3 and verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, shall what? Appear. See that? So Jesus Christ comes down and raptures us to heaven. Then shall ye what? Also appear with him in glory. See, you're up at the rapture. Whereof, but... Okay, they, 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 through all this, and, G and then the Antichrist revealed, and then all this happening. But don't be troubled about that. It's for they. Why? But, verse 13, we, you, happens to what? You're called to glory. See that? So 2 Thessalonians 2 and Matthew 24 are not verses that support church going through the tribulation. They definitely support the fact that the church cannot go to the tribulation. So that's this video covering both Matthew 24 and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I cover it more slowly, clearly, specifically on my other videos separately, but I had to mash these two together so that people online can understand that because they always turn to these two passages. This passage proved to you tribulation is for Jews, not for Christians. This passage proved to you that what they're that what they're afraid of is this event, Armageddon, coming of Christ, and that you're not reserved for that. You're called to glory. So your two favorite passages actually became your enemy at the end.